we'll wait for two minutes okay. for uh, YouTube live streaming. Some technical things are there to do. We have capacity of only 100 participants for this uh, online webinar. So we are trying to stream this webinar live on YouTube. So we want some uh, two, three minutes. Please wait. Now oh, I may request Professor Todarwal, Madam, to introduce today's chief guest, resource person, Professor Ratnamala Bendre, Madam. Over to Todarwal Minakshi, Madam. Good morning, all. May I audible? Yes, madam. Good morning. Indeed, it gives me immense pleasure while introducing today's keynote speaker and my guide, Professor Mrs. Ratnamala Bendre, ma'am, who is senior professor and head of the Pesticide and Agrochemicals School of Chemical Sciences, Kavietri Bahina Bai Saudari, North Maharashtra University. Bendra ma'am completed her graduation from Ferguson College and MSc from Department of Chemistry, University of Pune. Thereafter, she did her PhD on topic transition metal complexes of biological relevance under the guidance of 
professor subhash padde at university of pune Ma madam has 30 years experience of teaching and 34 years research experience two students have completed mphil and 21 students have completed phd madam you are muted todorar madam हेलो तोड़ोर मैडम हेलो तोड़ोर मैडम हेलो यू आर म्यूटेड नहीं करता प्रोफेसर मिसेस आर एस बेंद्रे हु इज सीनियर प्रोफेसर एंड हेड ऑफ द पेस्टिसाइड एंड एग्रोकेमिकल स्कूल ऑफ केमिकल साइंसेस कवियत्री बहिना बाई चौधरी नॉर्थ महाराष्ट्र युनिवर्सिटी बेंद्रे मैडम कंप्लीटेड हर ग्रेजुएशन फ्रॉम फर्ग्यूसन कॉलेज एंड एम एस सी फ्रॉम डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ केमिस्ट्री युनिवर्सिटी ऑफ पुणे देर आफ्टर शी डीड हर पी एच डी ऑन टॉपिक ट्रांजिशन मेटल कॉम्प्लेक्सेस ऑफ बायोलॉजिकल रिलिवन्स अंडर द गाइडन्स ऑफ प्रोफेसर सुभाष पादे एट युनिवर्सिटी ऑफ पुणे मैडम हैज थर्टी इयर्स एक्सपीरियंस ऑफ टीचिंग एंड थर्टी फोर इयर्स रिसर्च एक्सपीरियंस Two students have completed MPhil and twenty-one students have completed PhD under her guidance. And presently, eight students are working. Madam has ninety-seven research papers, three reviews in national and international journals of high repute, and three book chapter to her credit. She has applied one patent and another is under preparation. she has attended various national and international conferences in india and abroad madam has completed seven major research projects funded by csir ugc and twas italy and presently she is working as coordinator of ugc sap dsa first project of work 1.9 cr Madam has awarded with best funding award of 2013 to 14 and best publication awards for consecutive 6 years. She is recipient of UGC BSR Mid Career Award and received a fund of 10 lakh to carry out research on topic platinum versus gold plum complexes as a anti cancer agents. Considering this contribution Recently, she is selected as fellow of Maharashtra Academy of Sciences. Her thrust areas of research are development of pesticide and formulation, natural products and their derivatives as safer pesticides, use of metal complexes as catalyst, application of natural products in the in the synthesis of biologically active organic and inorganic compounds as antimicrobial. antioxidant anti tubercular anti diabetic and anti cancer compounds along with teaching and research she is involved in different extension activities she has worked as coordinator national science day program such as lecture series on laboratory and industrial safety vidyayan yatra krishi vidyayan yatra sponsored by science and technology cell government of maharashtra she has worked for pesticide encyclopedia project of government of india during 2009 to 2012 whose chief editor was dr vasantrao Go Go gowarikar she is life member of various organization of chemistry particularly indian council of chemists catalysis society of india indian association of solid state chemistry and allied sciences 
and Society of Material Chemistry. She is working in different cap capacities at university. Presently, she is a chief rector of Girls Hostel as well. She was a management council member of Kavietri Bahina Bai Saudari, North Maharashtra University. I welcome you, ma'am. Thank you. Okay, Hello. Am I audible? Hello. 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 He is my friend. Unmute yourself, hey, other hey, participants. Hey, Arbindo party. He is my I request today's resource person. Professor Ratnamala Bindre, madam, to deliver her lecture. So let me, madam, you are uh, muted. Please unmute yourself. Bindre, madam. Madam, please unmute yourself. Uh, yes. Okay, madam. You are audible now. Yes, sir. Just a minute. I will share my screen. I will share that, madam. No, I think I... Okay, okay. Okay, okay. Okay, madam. 
sharing has stopped everything. Hello. Hello. Am I audible? Yes, Am madam. Yes, okay. yes, madam. And okay, your good screen morning is... or, or afternoon. Uh, thank you very much for kind introduction. Today's topic is frontiers of pesticides and agrochemicals. The fundamental needs of man, like food, shelter, and clothing, these are fulfilled by fulfilled by the plants. But actually, how much nature can give us? As the population is increasing at a vast rate, we have to search for some alternatives by which we can protect our plants. There is increase in the population like this. In 1950, it was 2.5 billion. In 1960, it became 3 billion. And today, it is 8 billion or more than that. Along with the problems like population, there is scarcity of food because of drought and famine. If you see nowadays climate, the rains are not showering at the appropriate time. They are not in the sufficient quantity the water in the dam is less and there is difficulty in growing plants. In 1963, green evolution has helped agriculture. Farm, new farm tools were applied, irrigation facilities were improved and we became self-sufficient and started exporting food. The green revolution has taken barren land under cultivation and because of this, a lot of improvement has been done in agriculture. Old farming practices were replaced by new machineries like harvesters, tractors. Hand picking of cotton is now by harvester machine. And there are a lot of agrochemicals which are also helping us uh, to grow our plants in more quantities. So agrochemicals are the chemicals which protect, preserve, and regulate growth of plants, and thus they improve crop yield. The agrochemicals are divided into three parts, pesticides, fertilizers, and plant growth regulators. The plant growth regulators examples that we are more aware are indole acetic acid, naphthoxy acetic acid. Under fertilizers, we have micronutrients, macronutrients, and in pesticides, we have insecticides, herbicides, fungicides, and along with that, more number of pesticides like rodenticides, avicides, nematicides, etc. Man is troubled by various pests, that is, organisms which are injurious to man or his economic efforts. So, these pests or the creatures, they are subdivided or they are of the type public health pest in which mosquitoes, house flies, bed bugs, they are causing diseases to us. Domestic pests like cockroaches, ants, rats, they are in our house and they are consuming, consuming our food or making it unfit for human consumption. In agricultural pest, we have aphids, jacids, helicoverpa armigera, various larvae and adults, which are decreasing the crop yield. The stored commodity paste, they reduce the quality of the food grains and the weevils, borers, they go into the grains and make the grains unfit for human consumption. Along with that, we have some animal husbandry paste, ticks, 
mites etc which are present on the body of the or fleas which are present on the body of our pet animals like cows buffaloes goats and even the dogs and dogs and cats etc this thing वुडन फर्निचर and the carpet beetle are present on the carpet and the cloth these are some more examples of pests which are injurious to man or they are troubling human beings the pests are controlled automatically in the nature by climatic factors topographic factors or natural enemies and we apply certain control measures that are applied control measures like cultural practices biological pesticides mechanical devices physical devices genetic control regulatory control and chemical control so in natural control we have climatic factors in which the temperature humidity rain they control the insects number or insects population topographic factors like soil ocean mountain ranges they are controlling their number or they are not allowing them to enter in the particular premises in biological factors predators pathogens and parasites they cause diseases to the pest or predators eat the pest in applied control we have cultural control where we can apply clean cultivation method tilling of soil we can rot, uh, carry out crop rotation uh, you we can use resistant varieties or uh, use of ma manures and fertilizers make the plant healthy so that it is not attacked by the pest mechanical control uses insect traps hand picking netting artificial barrier fencing food attractants light trap etc in physical control we use certain physical or certain waves by which the insect get control like ultrasound waves gamma radiation electric coils etc in biological control biological agents like parasite predator pathogens are used to control the pests for example uh, hen is eating the insects so like such methods we can use the use them legal and regulatory control prevents the introduction of pest by laws as we are not allowed to take the grains or food material to the foreign country genetic control uses chromosomal translocation or introduction of lethal genes in chemical methods we are using various chemicals which are called as pesticides which are acting as stomach poison contact poison systemic poison or fumigant in biological control as i said we use various predators uh, to control the pests for example insects like trichogramma it is a deep uh, useful for defoliator pest fungi like trichoderma it is eating the or it is not allowing the fungi fungi to grow bacteria like bt they are controlling or causing disease to the heliotis armigera viruses like npv they are uh, not allowing the pest population to continue on like spodoptera lutura in biological materials we can use botanical or phytochemicals like neem which is the source of azea directin or chrysanthemum which is the source of pyrethrins the biopesticides they are derived by looking at the weakness of the pest these are some examples of predators that are eating the insects likewise we can have parasites pathogens which can cause diseases to the organisms the best example of the 
biological control is trichogramma chilonis this insect is inserting its egg or laying its egg in the egg of heliotis armigera or lady bird beetle it is eating aphids predator bird bird bug is eating the insects and this is praying mantis again eating the pest the example i said of neem which these plants are uh, growing nearby us and we have ample number of plants in our country they have the active ingredient called azadirectin and this azadirectin is acting as a repellent insect it is having insecticidal properties bactericidal antifungal anti predant oviposition and growth inhibiting properties the next example is of custard apple as we call in marathi as sitaphal its root leaf fruits seeds they are having toxic constituent in them which can control the pest in ancient period the girls they used to use this seeds extract for lice control the substance in our kitchen like turmeric it is having different properties like in repellent insecticidal antifungal then marigold it is repelling the insects chili as because of its hot properties it is not allowing the insect to come to the food or food grains nicotine which is having which is present in the nicotina tobacco it is having lots of properties but it is a nerve poison and it is toxic to all living organisms from nicotine people have developed nicotinoids means the compounds which are having similar structure to nicotine just a small modification in the structure can change the biological properties the biological properties may be increased and we can use these compounds in the same way in case of pyrethrins we can have pyrethroids pyrethrins are present in the plants as we say in marathi shevanti vargiya plants in this flower heads we have lots of compounds out of that the pyrethrin 1 pyrethrin 2 they are having biological activity and looking at the structure you can see the ester group present in the structure and similar structures can be produced by changing the r group present on it or structural modification by certain preparation of derivatives so as we said in chemical control we use pesticides the pesticides are preventing destroying repelling or mitigating the pests in our house we use lots of pesticides rat kill or rat killer this is a cake which is uh, which can be applied to kill the rats liquid vaporizer contains palatin uh, or neem extract can be used mosquito coils they have they can be prepared through pyrethrum powder and chalk called lakshman rekha uh, it contains delta methrin or cypermethrin insect killer sprays they have alethrin or resmethrin and such chemicals are useful in our house uh, for control of pests but actually if you see we are using these pesticides in large quantity than the recommended one so if here we are, you can see the methods of application of pesticides by various spraying techniques the pesticides are again further divided as i said in depending upon the pest they control if the pest is fungi we use fungicide so the target organism is fungi and the pesticide used is fungicide so chemicals used for destroying repelling or reducing pest they are called as pesticides for algae we use algicides for bacteria bactericides insect insecticides molus molucicides nematodes nematicides rodents rodenticides birds avicides plants herbicides so these chemicals we are using in large quantities for controlling insects or various organisms various pests these these are further examples of the pesticides that are used to control pests the pests are known by different names as in our house 
we are known by our some different name likewise the chemical uh, chemicals called pesticides they have three different types of names chemical name which is uh, given by iupsc or chemical abstract that is ca common names are given by iso indian standards organization or bsi british standards institute ansi american national standards institute iupsc is international union of uh, pesticides also have trade or brand names manufacturer these are given by manufacturer or formulators here is the example of the compound called as dimethoid its uh, chemical name iupsc name is given uh, here international union of pure and applied chemistry actually i was not reminding it sometimes it occurs like this uh, then common name is dimethoid and uh, trade name that is brand name is of uh, phosphomidon or roger given by the manufacturer or the formulators the uh, use of pesticides is increasing day by day so here you can see the herbicides are used up to 50% almost next is insecticides fungicides and others so you if you see in first pesticide was used in 1940 or synthetic pesticide was used in 1940 but before that our ancient people they used to do certain remedies or uh, Uh, find out certain remedies by which they can control the pest worldwide consumption is increasing from that time uh, this in 1940 ddt and bhc these were the pesticides used at the world war where the soldiers they were staying in the trenches where lots of lice and other insects and ants they were troubling them and mosquitoes were biting them and malaria was um the main disease over there so bhc ddt they were used to control the malaria so slowly the use of pesticides started increasing and nowadays you can find that herbicides are used in more quantity because the labor is in scarce and it's costly so we use pesticides in different sectors like agriculture veterinary veterinary means on animals pet animals etc domestic pest uh, for domestic use we use or institutional for example in libraries the books are attacked by termites or the silk worm or different worms that are that can eat or bore uh, holes in the books you must have seen the earlier books uh, which were which are having such holes the pesticides are not applied as such they are highly toxic and they need to be diluted because the pests are very small insects animals etc and for them very small dose is essential so we have to dilute them by using certain uh, chemical uh, certain solvents or water is the best solvent some pesticides are used as such the pesticides formulation take them in the appropriate form so that it, its application becomes easier there are certain formulations like soluble liquids gel paste chalk powder granules pellets based and so on we are going to come this come to this topic again afterwards the cons Hello. madam your voice is breaking hello
आता तर हॅलो बेंद्रे मॅडम हॅलो ॲम आय ऑडिबल बेंद्रे मॅडम हॅलो आवाज येतो पार्टिसिपंट्स प्लीज वेट इशू विथ इंटरनेट प्लीज वेट फॉर वाईल टू रिझ्यूम so all participants please note that there is some internet issue madam will resume within Thank short you, period madam unmute yourself please yes yes madam you are joined now uh, just a minute just a minute your audio problem yes, net yes. issue okay sorry for the no 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 problem you. you are welcome you may please take your own time madam you have disabled me for screening sharing the screen let me see that okay. please allow me to share the screen yeah yeah ma'am is it working just a minute ha huh? pick up the ball sure yes can you see the screen now yes yes so what's the issue so pesticide formulation these are the physical mixture of one or several biologically active chemicals and inner ingredient which provides effective and economic control of pest for example suppose we have synthesized certain pesticide it cannot be used if it is in semi solid form it cannot be used in a proper way so we have to dilute it and again it is 100% pure so we have to dilute it so we use certain carrier but only carriers cannot help us because some uh, properties have to be improved so for that we add adjuvants so it is nothing but a, a sum of pesticide plus carrier plus adjuvants forming formulated product so by mixing these three we can have different products as displayed over here so why we formulate the pesticide this allows us to cover more area to control dosage to reduce phytotoxic toxicity because sometimes the pesticide might be toxic to the plant itself so when we are diluting it its phytotoxicity becomes less we get uniform distribution by applying them it improves the physical and chemical properties of the formulation by dilution the product becomes economic it is easy to store handle and transport because 100% pure product will be difficult to handle so that's how 
our transporting will be a more responsibility will be there so by dilution it gives this freedom to us so we have different formulations like dust and powder granules solutions emulsions suspensions etc the these uh, are the examples of some formulations we are which are ready to use rtu bait they can be applied as such if you keep them in the corner the rats etc they will come and eat same is true with the cake aerosol can be sprayed easily in our house this you must be familiar with it fumigants these tablets can be applied uh, in our grains and their fumes can control the pest likewise dust when they are diluted by our active ingredient is diluted by dust we come we get dust formulation ai can be impregnated in the granules like suppose some bricks which are porous likewise some granules if they are porous uh, as bricks absorb water in the same way here granules which are porous they can absorb solution of active ingredient formulations are diluted with water or some solvent water is the best solvent universal solvent cheap easily available and thus water is more useful uh, for dilution of the pesticides or pesticide formulations so here is the example of solution this is suspension and this is the example of emulsion so you the beauty of this slide is that the emulsion is in the solution state till it comes to the farmers and farmers dilute them in the field to by forming emulsion so so generally the liquid form or formulations are applied in the liquid state in the form of solution suspension or emulsion this is the example of soluble powder soluble powder like in marathi we call pitti sagar it dissolves in water in the same way same way soluble powders dissolve in water forming solution similarly soluble granules if they are in the granular form they can be solubilized in water for example i can say khadi sagar or something like that then soluble liquids these are just diluted just concentrated to uh, dilute one wettable powders these are in the powder form and when they are mixed with water they form suspension so these are the examples of formulations that are applied as suspension so wettable powder wettable granules and suspension concentrate they are applied as suspension both wettable powder and wettable granules they are in the solid state till they are uh, uh, with farmer and farmer dilutes and converts it into suspension form to apply in the field why suspension concentrates these are concentrated suspensions these are only diluted in the field with the help of water so if you see all these formulations we have used water as a solvent next is the emulsion emulsifiable concentrates ec and oil in water emulsions they are applied in the emulsion form ec is present in the solution form and turns white upon mixing with water it has a smell of solvent so in this formulation we have to use some organic solvent actually if you see for years together we have used emulsifiable concentrate in large quantities this is the first formulation that was used in more quantity and has created lots of problems because of organic solvents it is creating hazards to the environment to the operator or the person who is spraying it so you can see people have used the pesticide when they found that it is useful for example here you can see the mother is spraying her uh, daughter's hair with the help of solution of ddt so that's how the pesticide is going in the body of the children here the person is not aware that this pesticide is may create problem to his child so there are multiple chemicals that we are using multiple source of exposures are there in the atmosphere multiple routes of exposure for example the pesticide can enter through our skin 
through our uh, as stomach poison through our food or uh, through uh, our air that we respire or inhale in that there may be chances that the pesticide may be present so there may be multiple effects because of these multiple sources exposures and chemicals here you can see the example where food which is contaminated if it is eaten water which is contaminated or uh, the water that is coming through our well if it is uh, having certain source or a dissolved pesticides it may create problem that's how we are consuming lots of pesticide day by day and in our body or in the body of animals the products are bio accumulating we think that mother's milk is the most pure form but the child is not even safe in the mother's womb the mother's intake and body burden is transferring uh, the pesticides across the placenta breast milk which is the purest form but now it is contaminated the residue analysis has shown that mother's milk is also having uh, certain residues of pesticides these are the roots of exposure ingestion means we are taking food through that the pesticide is going in our body so breast feeding accidental ingestion residues in the food or mouthing when we are mouthing the pesticide solution from one container to the other so in such cases there are chances that the food may get may be contaminated and the pesticide may enter our digestive system through inhalation indoor and outdoor spraying of pesticides or occupational exposure occupational exposure means when you are working in the pesticide industry when you are working in the agricultural field uh, and the pesticide the air if it is contaminated with pesticide there are chances of inhalation of pesticides in dermal absorption there may be accidental contact with the skin or occupational exposure again in the while working in the laboratories residues on surface if we touch certain surface which is already sprayed with the pesticide or contaminated clothing can uh, provide this pesticide residues to our skin medical uses like scabies uh, control of scabies head lice as i showed you ddt was sprayed in the head or hair of the daughter in the same way here the chemicals or the creams that we use for control of pest they may Uh, the pesticide may enter in our body through that route if you see the pesticides are highly toxic products some pesticides are deadly poisons they are knockdown po poisons they may kill the pest but along with that just a minute they may kill the pest but along with that we are getting this pesticide in our body some pesticides are crossing the placental membrane means the mother and baby means when the baby is growing in the mother's womb at that time through placenta certain pesticide get transferred so i was talking about toxicity sorry so when in single dose the organism is killed that type of toxicity is called as acute toxicity or it is high level exposure over poisoning or over poisoning of the uh, organism and chronic toxicity refers to the low level uh, toxicity or low level exposure for example every day suppose we are coming in contact with certain pesticide and then we get the toxicity that toxicity is chronic toxicity now the toxicity has to be expressed how we can express more toxic and less toxic this is not the proper way of expressing it so it is expressed in the two units like ld50 that is lethal dose which is given in milligrams per kg so it is the lethal dose in milligrams to kill 
one kg of organism. LC fifty is lethal concentration, means the concentration present in the atmosphere. There are certain benefits of pesticide, as we saw: crop protection, food preservation, material preservation, disease control. But the risks are they are toxic to humans or have impact on environment and ecosystem. So this is the cycle in which the pesticides are rotating. The pesticide once it is applied. its job is over but it remains in the atmosphere for long time it goes into the water through rains it goes in the into the atmosphere by evaporation and that's how again it is coming in our water in our food and again and again we are exposed to the pesticides every year we are applying the pesticides so because of that large quantity of pesticide is getting stored in our body and when the pesticide is present in our body or in air or in water we call these as pesticide residues there are lots of effects of pesticide residues the two i am going to talk are biomagnification and bioaccumulation bioaccumulation means accumulation of the pesticide in our body as we grow for example here as the fish grow slowly They are, they are the amount of pesticide in their body will go on increasing so the old fish or the have the fish having more age will be having more pesticide present in our in its body in the same way here biomagnification means suppose the grass is uh, spread with the pesticide and rabbit eats the grass the rabbit is having residues the rabbit is eaten by python so python is having the pesticide residue and the eagle which eats the python it is having more quantity in its body now you can see that the birds eat more insects so more and more quantity of the uh, substance goes in their body and that's how there is magnification as we say magnifying lens which shows bigger sized photos or bigger size um, picture likewise here the magnification takes place when uh, the through food chain it is going in the body of the animal the diseases are caused because of this pesticides like uh, ocular irritation eyes they get irritation because of pesticide lower respiratory tract irritation allergic response like asthma gastrointestinal symptoms neurological symptoms etc some pesticides may cause carcinogen Car uh, cancer such substances are called as cancer forming sus substances so the process is called as carcinogenesis that is cancer formation likewise if there is mutation we call them as uh, mutagens or mutation is taking place teratogenesis causes defects in the fetus these are certain examples by which we can see that there is a uh, teratogenesis in the uh, babies ha uh ha -huh. for here in the animal we can see uh, the defect in the because of uh, at the time of birth so there are certain based birth defects that are uh, causing this problems of teratogenesis so we can use personal protective equipment to control uh -huh. exposure to pesticides i think there is some noise uh, coming so i am getting disturbed please see all participants please mute yourself so be careful you are handling pesticides you have to read the instructions you have to follow the uh, rules that are given to uh, given there use the various protective equipment and protect yourself so is there any option by which we can control the pest with without using pesticides yes obviously so you can see that the farmers are using various operations like tillage operations collection and destruction of pest hand picking of the pest we can treat the seeds with certain fungicides bactericides by which the fungal or bactericide bacterial disease may not catch the plant certain fertilizers can be used by which the plant become healthier and they will be resistant to attack of pests weed management because the pests are present on weed 
they get transferred to the crop so we can first control the weed so that they will not get transferred to our crop then collection and destruction of insects for example when at some time the insects were not getting killed by the pesticide at that time farmers have used the trick of collecting the pest and destroying them only collecting them in plastic bag and keeping the bag closed for some days may kill the pest we can release the natural enemies so it is said that keep a stop for birds in your field nowadays people are cutting trees but if trees are there the birds will be there in the field the birds will eat the pest pest or insects so there will not be uh, necessity of pesticides use applying certain bacteria or viruses can control the pest so there are certain preparations available like npv virus nucleopolyhydrosis virus or bt bacillus thuringiensis such preparations can control the insect we can use bio pesticides we can use botanicals and last option will be use of chemical pesticides actually people were using this pesticide for years together years together but one author of the book richel carson she observed that the spring has become silent and she wrote a book silent spring that the birds are not chirping there is no noise of the birds and birds number has decreased so the environmentalist they have to take note of this and the certain laws came into existence environmental conservation became the point of our concern and that's how now there is ban on certain pesticides or use of pesticides is carried out to the lesser extent if you see in first generation we have used inorganic compounds or botanicals these were highly toxic compounds they were not specific in second generation we have used synthetic pesticides these pesticides these are remaining in the nature for long time they are biomagnifying and that's how their concentration is increasing so people thought of using certain pesticides which will not be harmful to the environment and insect growth regulators pheromones bio pesticides their use started in to the more extent so igrs these are nothing but insect growth regulators they control the growth of insects they are just controlling insect growth not human growth so one must keep this point in uh, mind and we can use this pesticides not pesticides i will call insect growth regulators because they are only regulating the growth of the insects as we know the life cycle of insect is having egg larva and pupa egg larva pupa and adults and they are converting from one stage to the another in this way and the insect growth regulators they what they do they don't allow the egg to hatch or pupa to adult or adult to lay eggs or uh, larva to pupa conversion so likewise they are just disrupting the life cycle so that's how they are just disrupting the life cycle of insect not of human beings or no, nothing will happen to human beings there are certain uh, hormones that are present in insect that are controlling this particular egg larva pupa and adult transformation so likewise looking at this particular point we have prepared certain de derivatives uh, by from naturally occurring phenolic monoterpenoid which is cheap easily available and possessing number of biological activities this is another compound that we have converted into various derivatives to form insect growth regulators we have used this particular insect spodoptera lidora for our studies to uh, find out the insect growth regulator activity this is another insect red cotton bug on which we have taken the activity so two insects we have selected for our studies so this as i said the naturally occurring phenolic monoterpenoid was converted to the diacyl hydrazine and diacyl thiohydrazine derivatives so these are the compounds series of compounds prepared 
I'm taking this part somewhat hurriedly because there are lots of slides to see and just showing structures will be enough. I'm not going in the synthesis procedure. Uh, so these types of series were prepared and these compounds were tested. Uh, further, they were cyclized. Some few more uh, compounds derivatives were prepared from these two. So oxidizol and thiodizol uh, structures were formed in our compounds. The compounds were well characterized by the sophisticated techniques like UV visible, IR, H1 NMR, C13 NMR mass. And along with that, we have used single crystal X-ray crystallography. These are the various examples of the structures that uh, their structures were solved and they confirm that whatever we have synthesized is according to our desire. Then we use these compounds in the diet of the insect. So certain insects were grown on the diet which was not incorporated with the pesticide. Whereas certain diet were prepared with the concentration 10 ppm, 100 ppm, 300 ppm, 500 ppm, 1000 ppm, 5000 ppm likewise. And the insects were allowed to grow on that diet. So what was observed is that the insect which was not given any pesticide, it is healthy one. The insect or larva which is given 0.01% dose, its weight is less. If 0.05% is there, its weight is still less and 0.1%, its actually movement has stopped. So you can see that the there was certainly effect of dose of pesticide on the insect. Another thing is that the insects were not grown to their proper pupal stage to the adult stage uh, they were unable to move and because of the, that the reproduction was stopped. Here you can see that this is the standard compound. This is the activity for standard compound. The activity was looked by looking at the larval weight reduction which is the GI50 or pupal weight reduction which is GI50 of pupa or adult GI50. So in this particular graph, you will see that compound number 12 and compound number 6, they have shown best activity. Which are these compounds then? So you can see that the study structure activity correlation was carried out in which it was found that certain functionalities or certain groups, they are reducing the activity, certain groups are increasing the activity. And it was found that 2,6 difluoro derivatives, they have best activity among the series. 1,2 diacyl hydrazine and 1,2 diacyl thiohydrazine, they showed comparable activity, insect growth activity with the standard compound, novel urone, because it is con compared with the standard compound. These are certain publications. Again, these are next series. Again, characterization. I am skipping these slides. These are certain more publications. These are some more compounds. Then new publications. IGR activity, structure activity relationship. Here it can be best explained here. Ortho is showing, ortho substitution is showing better activity than para. Chloro derivatives are more active than chloro. Urea derivatives are more active than thiourea. 2,6 difluoro derivatives are far more active than other derivatives. Okay. What we talked is 2,6 difluoro is showing more activity than 2 fluoro, 4 fluoro, 2 chloro, 4 chloro, and normal without any substitution. Actually, if you see, this work is tedious. Lots of series have been looked at and the vast number of compounds are found. Similarly, we prepared certain um, formulations like emulsion, oil in water emulsion, by which we can apply this pesticide in better way. But these pesticides were not used. We have used essential oil to prepare the oil in water emulsion because we feel that certain good things should be given to the return to the society. As society has given us education, Society has given us position 
society has given us respect so we must return something to the society and so that's why we are looking at certain uh, plant based products which can be used for agricultural use these are the experiment experimental part so i will not go in the detail so emulsion was prepared so this emulsion uh, is shown here prepared emulsion the stability of the emulsion was checked because when we are giving the product to the farmers it must be stable in the uh, shell or in the field while application so that's why stability studies were carried out this is something extra i will not talk on it so if you see some pesticides are causing diseases or allergy to the farmers actually farmers they are giving good food to us but they are, have to use more amount of pesticide so as to control the pest because they have to grow more quantity because people are not giving money to them people are bargaining for the products so actually we are somewhere responsible for this so we have to give respect to the products of the farmers so please this is the message i wanted to give you okay coming to the slides as we see in the coconut the coconut pulp is protected by outside coating hard coating or in egg the shell is covering the yolk in the same way we thought of or people have thought of using the pesticide in the protected way so they protected this pesticide inside the polymers capsule next lecture is by professor geete who is polymer chemistry person he is he make talk more about the polymers the polymers they have this property certain polymers have certain property to release the pesticide in controlled manner in the atmosphere and because of that they control the pest for longer time because of the protection the amount of pesticide required is less and that's how uh, the uh, it will be economic it will be less hazardous to the atmosphere so such formulations they were characterized this is the synthesis of the polymer in which we have used our pesticide or pesticide or i will say the pyrethroid which are having irritation problem or allergy problem these are certain more characterizations so when we are doing this much or i am showing this much this is the effort of 30 years and my students have worked for day and night in the laboratories this study is showing control release study this pesticide this was the preparation of cs formulation and this is the stability study it was confirmed release of the compound was confirmed by uv method or by loss on drying method the capsules were dried and their weight was looked at there are certain publications i have not uh, used them here okay then micro encapsulation by using starch graft polymerization so rather than using chemical polymer people have thought of using natural polymers like starch so this was the study carried out by one of my students who is in bsf our lots of students are present in the pesticide industries like upl bayer uh, nova and so on uh, garada lots of pesticide companies are there these are certain publications coming to some part on plant growth regulators as i talked about insect growth regulator some part was carried out on plant growth regulators certain compounds were prepared derivatives were prepared they were studied for by laboratory experiments in the laboratory petri dish and pot assay was used in this way to grow the plants and again further it, the studies were taken to the field trials again the study was taken on plant tissue culture and we found that some of our compounds they are showing plant growth tissue culture activity also as plant growth regulators so coming to the last slide what is the future scope is something over now no you can work on certain pesticides uh, certain uh, compounds like insect growth regulators or insect pheromones bio pesticides which are less hazardous to the nature to the uh, to the human beings to animals non target organisms etc 
one can use botanicals we can see that from kashmir to kanyakumari lot of temperature variation is there in our country we are really very fortunate we have lots of plants trees nearby us and because of that we can use such plants to control these pests these compounds are biodegradable the plants are having excellent track record in providing lead for their own protection because the plants try to protect themselves by preparing certain chemical by modifying certain chemicals and they are acting as bioreactors to prepare such compounds they produce several secondary metabolites which can protect them and that's how we can use these compounds for protecting our plants so we can have eco friendly natural compounds that can be used another thing is that use of integrated pest management national integration is known to you rashtriya ekatmata likewise here we can use all the control measures together so that there will be, will not be necessity of chemical pesticides to large extent we can prepare advanced formulations another thing that is coming is nano pesticides which have advantages of small size and sharp surface which can directly interact with the cell membrane or pass through the cell wall and cell membrane and because of that the insects may get killed innovative nano pesticides are the nano materials engineered for plant protection so nowadays this work is going on i will not go in the details of it and i will come to the last slide i said you that this is not the work of one day it is the work of 30 years and these are my soldiers who have carried out lot of work they have worked in day and night they have utilized their legitimate holidays in the lab they have worked like anything they were present in the lab for so many hours and they have not looked at their comfort and leisure so one has to do work in this same way and the message that that i want to give to you is that the help to you help to society help to society is help to you so go on working nowadays mobiles have created lot of pollution in the our in our brain so one has to come to nature again one has to come to society again another thing is that now the plants are not planted rather they are burnt i saw lots of mountains nowadays this while coming from kokon to jalga lot of burning of jungle is taking place so if you can do something for planting trees and stopping the degeneration of nature that will be this the good message that that will come to you thank you very much i thank all my uh, research students for their great work i thank the organizers trustees and members of this particular conference for giving me an opportunity to uh, to give this knowledge to you thank you very much thank you madam now i am going to give the vote of thanks i am dr rakesh sanchiti on the behalf of the management of snjv and the college arts commerce science college sandwad we are very much thankful to professor dr bendre for giving a such a nice talk on the frontiers of pesticides and agrochemicals madam dilior very basics talk from very basics to the applied so once again thankful ma'am for your nice lecture over thank to dr thank you thank you dr rakesh sanjeeti sir for his vote of thanks now participants uh, i really welcome for your patience uh, to listen this lecture very peacefully now we are just going to towards second lecture 
by our today's resource person dr vikas geete sir head department of polymer chemistry school of chemical sciences north maharashtra university jalgaon i think uh, geete sir uh, you are in yes you are you are visible to us sir uh, i request my colleague dr sanjay khairnar sir introduce today's resource person second resource person dr vikas geete sir towards khairnar sir thank you varun sir i take this opportunity to introduce uh, today's speaker dr vikas geete sir Sir is working as a head department of polymer chemistry, School of Chemical Science, Kavitri Bainavai Choudhary, North Maharashtra University. Sir has total twenty years of teaching experience and research experience. There are different countries visited by sir, uh, in which Nepal, Netherlands, South Korea, Mauritius, and Cyprus. Uh, research search area, micro. encapsulation for smart coatings pesticide formulations devices of new shells of micro capsulations polymer hydrogels polymer derived from renewable sources preparation of polyurethane coatings polymer nano composites and blends and hyper branch polymer synthesis sir has guided more than uh, sir has guided uh, 14 phd students four students are working under his guidance sir has guided two PA, uh, students for mtech degree publications sir has published more than 69 research papers in reputed journals sir has presented 54 conferences book chapters edited by sir is 10 google citation index is 2349 google h index is 29 sir has patent uh three popular articles five completed and ongoing projects are completed projects are eight and three projects are ongoing google i10 index is 51 currently sir is uh, working on the three projects which is cost more than 30 lakhs sir has completed eight research projects uh, cost around more than 50 lakhs different bodies have awarded the scholarship prizes uh, some of them i will briefly explain sir has awarded the fellow of maharashtra academy of academy of science to 2020 sir has also awarded apa young scientist award 2016 of asian polymer association sir also has awarded the best research award three times 2015 2016 2017 and 2022 by nmu uh, university sir also has awarded the jordan award in 2016 by oil and color chemical association of uk sir is research uh, senior fellowship srf in 2004 there are different types of the professional organizations sir is uh, working as a member asian polymer association apa new delhi society of polymer science india indian council of chemists icc agra india solid state and allied chemicals jammu india sir also serving as a reviewer for different types of the uh, international journals international journals in the field of polymers coatings and composites uh, acs journal elsevier ville teller and francis and springer sir he is uh, having the administrative experience in charge head department of industrial chemistry member of nac steering committee kb c nmu university jalgaon member of board of studies nmu university jalgaon so with this brief i conclude here and um, i over to ship over to the am parties thank you sir thank you because geete sir have uh that uh, more dynamic work so uh, there was a uh, big that introduction but sir just shorten that 
and represented this brief uh, biodata. So we will welcome uh, the our today's resource person, a dynamic resource person, Dr. Vikas Gite, sir. Uh, over to you, sir. Gite, sir. Okay, you are. Uh, please um, uh, unmute yourself, sir. Okay, it is now. Yes, sir. Yes. It was unmuted from your side. Uh, okay. Can you please allow me to share a screen? Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, just wait for a while. I will. I think uh, you joined uh, with Ratna Saole. Uh... No, sir. No. Huh? I have joined with. Vikas name, uh, your name only? Vikas, Vikas Gite. Uh, yes, 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 sir. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Now you are co host, sir. Okay, sir. thank I you. Sir. You are able to share the PPT. Okay, sir, thank you. Uh, thank you for, for nice introduction and calling me here. I know uh, we are already. Uh, delayed with some schedule and therefore I will not go in. Uh, I will take minimum time, whatever is possible from my side. Actually, slides were pre prepared and lecture was prepared for more time. Uh, but uh, time delay and I will. I don't want to be in between food and uh, you people. So let me start with slide sharing. Yeah. Sir, is it visible now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sir, uh, yes, PPT is visible. Yeah, yeah. Shall I enter Ajesh uh, uh, Tejas ahead? Yes, sir. Okay, sir. Because uh, they are allowing me to uh, enter these people also. Yes, yes, yes. Sir, uh, get that uh, PPT. Yes, sir. Yeah. Is it visible now, sir? Yes, Clear? sir. Okay. Yes, sir. If you are visible, PPT so, is also visible. Yeah. We will be talking on industrial applications of polymer chemistry. Even though title indicates this is uh, regarding applications of polymer, my more inclination is towards the applications of polymer chemistry students or opportunities to the polymer chemistry if you have came across. Say polymer chemistry student does not mean you should be master or bachelor or PhD in polymer. You, you could have you could have uh, any subject, maybe during your uh, bachelor as an elective subject or you, during your master as one of the subject or during PhD, uh, you might come across somewhere. So that is also applicable for this presentation. So this is my institute or Bendra Madam has already talked about or Dr. Sancheti sir has done PhD. So this is our wonderful picture of university and uh, <laughs> Sancheti sir is laughing that how the picture is uh, so sweet. Uh, he has not seen this picture from any uh, uh, this side. Sir, this is from the convocation uh, side when there was no convocation hall before that this picture is taken. That's why uh, you might not have seen this clearly. And this is the School of Chemical Sciences from where I am I'm talking or even uh, Professor Bendre Madam has talked uh, with you people. So objectives of this presentation are to tackle challenges for chemistry jobs, not only polymer job, but chemistry jobs and increase awareness about challenges in polymer chemistry and aware about opportunities for polymer chemistry students. So I will be talking on as well as uh, regarding the application for polymer. So this is a flow of presentation. Uh, this is just one smooth flow I have shown. Uh, titles may not match in your this one. This is the first slide what I, I want to talk, confusion of Indian students. They, they are very much confused whether to be scientists, 
should give, go to the competitive examination, business, uh, should be academician, lawyer, agriculture, engineer, medicine, or whatever it is there. So you are confused there. And yes, of course, you have to be confused. There are some reasons. And these are some areas where you can go agriculture, medicine, e-learning, technology, like this. This confusion is because of this next part, upliftment in education and education standard. Since the independence of India, you can find there are two big personalities here, Mahatma Jyotirao Phule, uh, who will be having his anniversary on the 11th of April, and Nelson Mandela, so both of them uh, talked about the education. Mandela said that education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. Or you know about the Mahatma Jyotiwa Pule regarding Vidya Bina Gai Mati. We know in, even in Marathi. So the last word is Eka Avidine Kie Kitne Anarth. So there are, this is very important part that education. And we have realized that. And since the realization of this, there is in the scenario that the requirement of number of universities has tremendously increased. When we were studying, we were saying that around 11% of people are getting chance to go for higher education. But nowadays, you are having around 24 to 25% of uh, students are going or they are taking education, which is uh, of the higher education style. And that's why you can find continuously there is increment or addition of universities in India. Right now, we are having more than 1,100 universities in India and around 50 lakhs of students are taking education in Indian universities. So this is one of the huge number, but this do, do not, uh, don't consider it as a favorable for you. It is a challenge for you rather because this much number of students they want job, they want further upliftment, and therefore that is a challenge in front of you people. So if you look look around, so around 40% of students are going for arts and humanities and social sciences, 16% for science, 16% around for engineering, and 14% for the commerce. So this is how the picture is. It may be changed a little bit year, year to year, but overall picture is like that. And this create the confusion in you. And there is no picture in next few years you will have uh, freedom pro from it because if you look at this picture, this is the population growth in China, India, Nigeria, and USA, which are major uh, populated countries or will be a major populated country in uh, next decades. And that is why uh, you are having these problems. If you look at the China's graph, China started to decline now, their population is decreasing. So whatever worst condition was with them, that they will approach in 10 to 15 years as far as education concern is, education is concerned. Whereas in India, if you look at, uh, we are not stagnant yet. That means our population has not stagnant. And once you stagnant, uh, you have a stagnant population, thereafter, after 15 to 20 years, you will have change in the higher education system because uh, since uh, birth, you take around 15 to 20 years to come to the higher education and therefore uh, we, we will not have relief at least 2060 from this number and we will have challenges in handling this number for educational institute, handling this number for giving them jobs. And that's why we have one of the highest number of unemployed people in India. So what we have in front of us as far as job is concerned, so we are going for job, either government job or private job. Before around 2000 or that, we were having a lot of government jobs and uh, day by day government jobs are reducing. Rather, uh, I will say they are not reduced, they are stagnant. Government don't want to give more jobs. They want to do jobs or that some the same work with the skilled manpower or computer or something like, and therefore their jobs are stagnant. Comparatively, requirement of people who require job are increasing tremendously, and therefore uh, there is an issue of government jobs. So we are going to the private job.
there, there, therefore, we have to think about the government private job as well as instead of having bachelor degree, we are going for master degree or master to the PhD or MTech or some higher degrees. And we are also thinking on freelancing and business. Uh, you may be having your own or uh, your family business. You can join that business. So these are various four kinds of uh, normal solution in front of students after graduation. Uh, friends, we know about uh, jobs. We know about higher education. We know about business, maybe small or large business of your family or maybe startup. But what about freelancing? So that I will talk to you at the end of our presentation. So that is also one opening in front of you. And these are some uh, types of job. IP agent, this is totally new job for you. Might be not known to many of you, intellectual property agent. So if you are from science and technology background uh, graduate, then you, you, you have chance to be IP agent. Own startup, you can have conventional business, your family business, competitive examinations. These are also possible direct uh, recruitment or your uh, recruitment through your administrative services. That is also possible. Direct recruitment means you, if you are from the chemistry background, there are some position for chemistry background. So they required master uh, chemistry. So in that case, your direct recruitment is possible and competition is low. Whereas if you want to go for administrative competitive examination, any graduate can appear for that. And therefore, there is use competition. We want to be academician, researcher, scientist, or want to industrial job, consultant, freelancing. These are some uh, options in front of you people. But the job mindset had changed from government to private because in 1980, the only source of income was a government job. More openings to private is one of the reason while government sector offers less vacancies and not guaranteed even when you are ready for jobs, there may not be government advertisement. You have to wait for many years that don't, it is new generation don't want. They want an immediate job, let it be of a lower value or a bit lower opportunities, but they, they want to grab this. And therefore one of the reason to go for private job is this. Salary in government is fixed. If you are very strong, if you have very good knowledge, information, hard worker, you want to grow fast, which is not possible in government. And therefore, people are going to the private. All gadas and godas are same in your uh, government job, where, which is not the case in private sector. If you are strong enough, if you are showing your potential, you have more opportunity. Uh, in technology part also, government uh, jobs are not utilizing that much technology as fast as the private uh, firms and industries are utilizing. This will provide you the best technology and keeps you updated. Your office is also updated. If you enter to the government office, you know, government offices we can identify immediately. See, even though you are strong enough and you still want to sacrifice your progress, but your hobbies, look, aesthetic value of your uh, surrounding, these all are not favorable in many cases in the government job. Slowly they are changing, but uh, compared to private, private is changing very fastly. And therefore, uh, there is a willingness of this young generation towards the private jobs. Why we are going for higher education, that is improve your employment prospect. We know after having bachelor degree, let it be BSc Chemistry, BCA, BSc Physics, or BSc Mathematics. So we have very few opportunities, and therefore we, are, we want to improve these chances of getting employed. As well as when you go for a higher education, let it be PhD, MTech, or some other higher education, you are acquiring new, new skills, and therefore employment chances are there, or you may be happy with that, those. And personal pleasure is also important. You may be in love of the subject and you just don't want job, but you, you want, it's your passion. And therefore you want to go for higher education. So these are various reasons for going higher education. But there is one thread in higher education. You don't get money. You don't get salary in this case. But of course, there are some higher education part that you can achieve some or acquire some money that I will talk in 
our latter phase of our presentation. Now I will be talking regarding the polymer. Chemically, how polymers are made. So I have shown a small molecules like your ethane, ethane, methane, propane, like this. These are small molecules or low molecular weight compounds. So monomer is one basic fundamental building block for polymers. And when they are joining together, they are forming very long chain like a train. Suppose train is having one single bogey, it's like monomer. And when number of bogies are joining, it can have around 20, sorry, uh, around 20 to 30 number of bogies for passenger trains. And this is very long. Similar is the case with the polymer. So low molecular weight compounds are coming together. They are joining together and they are forming a long polymer chain. So there, there this word can be uh, separated like poly means many and meros means many parts. You, you might have uh, came across polytechnics, polyclinics. So poly means many. Many clinics or many techniques are coming together and that's why that polyclinic, polytechnic words have arrived. Similarly, this poly means here many and MERS means you, units or parts. When these parts are combined together, they are forming polymer and you get a polymer with some repeating units. I have shown one example of uh, the largest produce polymer on the earth that is polyethylene. We know polyethylene's application, various polyethylene applications are surrounded to you people. So the pain which is of one rupees or two rupees, we are calling it as a usanthropain. That pain can, can be made from polyethylene. Carry bags, what you are using day to day for day to day applications, they are made from polyethylene. So it is made from very low molecular weight, like ethane, uh, ethane's type of molecule, but it is different than ethane that it has a saturation, uh, unsaturation and this ethylene molecule after polymerization, so number of ethylene molecules can join and can form the polymer and normally we represent it like a bracket and inside the repeating unit we are putting. So you cannot imagine how big molecules we can prepare by this process. You may be thinking ethylene is having just 28 molecular weight and 10, 20, 30, uh, ethylene molecules can join and they can form molecular weight, maybe 280, 500, 600. Friends, mm -hmm. this polyethylene have a wonder here. It can be up to 50 lakh, 1 crore to 5 crore molecular weight. So it's a huge molecular weight. This is the only polymer with that, kind, that much molecular weight. Other polymers are having molecular weight mostly in few thousands. And... These polymers are very important in your life, very important in everybody's life. So they can be classified based on source, molecular structure, thermal response, polymerization mechanism, applications, and performances. Mm -hmm. So if you look at the sources, they can be natural polymer, they can be uh, artificially syn or uh, synthesized polymer, we call them as a synthetic polymers. And friends, whatever nature are, uh, is making, nature gives ability to destroy that also. So natural polymers are biodegradable, whereas synthetic polymers are not biodegradable. Even though I am putting you very positive side of the coin, there is a, another dark side of the coin we have to look at, that is uh, these polymers are non-biodegradable and they are making problem to the environment, but this problem is not because of polymer. This problem is improper utilization of this polymer by us. Improper utilization of polymer or we are throwing them uh, in the environment instead of putting them into the recycling chain. So that is one classification uh, based on molecular structure, thermal response that I will talk you. Whenever word comes thermal response, I always call Chalega or nahi chalega. Uh, you may be thinking what is chalega and what is nahi chalega. Chalega ka matlab hai, when you are throwing this material for recycling, people are asking that, uh, kabadi wala jo aapke haa aata hai, wo bolta hai, saab ye chalega aur ye nahi chalega. Chalega matlab the material which is recyclable. Normally that is thermoplastic. So what that person is doing, it, he or she is giving it to some industry where that will be scrapped into fine particles, melted, and once again, you reutilize 
or making new articles. So that is chalega, that is thermoplastic. And thermosetting materials are during the process, in first time processing, they are cross-linked. And therefore, if you want to have the second time processing, that is very difficult. So, wo chalega nahi. But because that is difficult to recycle, isle wo nikal deta hai. So, this is very important term that is thermal response, polymerization mechanism, applications and performances. There are various kinds of uh, polymers. I am not going in the details of types of polymer. I will come to the next part. Uh, this is what thermosetic and thermoplastic kinds of polymer. Polyethylene is thermoplastic polymer. It contributes around 33% of thermoplastic polymer. Vinyls, polypropylene, PMMA, ABS, various polymers are here. Similarly, in the cross-link polymer, epoxy, phenolic, polyesters, polyamides, polyurethane, there are some polymers which I have kept in left side as well as right side. That means they can be thermoplastic or they can be thermoset. I will tell you about the epoxy polymer, applications of this epoxy polymer. Uh, everybody know about araldite or m -sealing. So, these araldite and m are made from the epoxy resin. Epoxy resin can be formulated into two parts. One is hardener and one is resin. Hardener is normally with the amine terminated uh, polymer chains, whereas resin is with epoxy, that is CH2, CH2 and O. So, it is three-membered ring. So, this three-membered ring is at the end of polymer chain. And this three-membered ring is reactive towards amine. So when it reacts, it reacts at room temperature also. And that's that's converts into cross-link polymer. So whenever you are taking MC, you have two layers, maybe uh, folded one or another. Earlier, we were having two different tubes or uh, paste, and we were mixing in the equal proportion. Similarly, in the araldite, we have two different tubes where we are mixing them at the time of application. So these tubes are one is called as resin, another is called as hardener. Resin is transparent, hardener is yellow in color. When you squeeze both of them, they, they when and when when we mix, they start to react. So epoxy group of epoxy resin want to react with amine group of hardener, and in this way polymerization happens or cross-linking happens, and that converts into thermoset material. I will talk one example of phenolic resins. When you, you are having this phenolic resin, it is highly thermally stable resin. And therefore, we are using it for preparing handles of kitchenware. So they are normally black color because phenolics cannot be in the paint color. They can only be in the dark color. And you can find these are dark color handles. So, this, so these handles are highly thermally stable and they are made from phenolic material. Whereas we know PVC pipes, polyethylene, uh, carry bags, polypropylene, furniture atoms, then PMMAs, uh, this uh, specs are made from PMMA or polycarbonate, then ABS handles, polycarbonates are used for uh, either for these glasses or they are used for big jars and saturated polyesters like your paint bottle used for this. So this bottle is made from polyethylene top phthalate. So we have this thermoset, thermoplastic material and these are recyclable. Even in this case, we have this lead made from polypropylene. So both of these are recyclable material. And polymers are very important in our life. If you look at here, they can be a plastic type. Plastic means hard utility article made from polymer. So you can find here crate or some engineering articles, this plastic bottle, paints, this mouse, computer case. These are plastic articles made from polymer. So polymer can be classified as a plastic, elastomer, fiber, and resin also. In the case of elastomers, they are elastic. So when you stretch them, you can stretch easily. But when you release the pressure, that will go to its original uh, Position. So, this rubber bands, O-rings and these, these rubber tubes are examples of elastomers which have very high elongation, maybe 100 times, 200 times, up to 500 times elongation is there. In case of fiber, we know these fibers are very small uh, diameter material and very long compared to its diameter around 100 or more than 100 times. 
diameter of this material is. It can be filament, it can be circular also. So these fibers are utilized to make your cloth. So we have these cloths made from fibers. We have these fibers for making robes. We have these fibers for making uh, reinforcing material in the tire. When we cut the tire, we get a white color threads. So these threads are also fibers. So various applications of fibers are there. Then we have the resins. We have resins. I just talk about the aryltides. So this is white color is your resin and another is hardener. Even in fact, Fevicol is also resin. Resins are low molecular weight compounds formulated in the liquid form. form uh, sorry, they can be used to formulate as a liquid form of applications and then they, you can use it. So your paints, uh, coatings, this and your adhesives are of uh, resin type. Even uh, you are getting five rupees that glue, uh, glue tube for adhering the paper. So that is also a resin part. So you can uh, think of that resin, uh, they, how they are. And you can find various applications of polymer. So it's not, you can say exaggerated to say this is the age of polymer. Because each and everything, what you require, that is based on the polymers. So take example of your mobile on which you are having lecture. If you are having mobile, then okay. If you are having computer or laptop, still it is also this one. So the screen of your mobile or screen, this, this screen, I'm not talking about the toughened glass, but inside of this material is a liquid crystalline polymer. I have utilized one cover to this for as a to protect it from protect it from shocks when it falls down. So this is also made from a rubber material. And this back side of this previously it was removable. That time it was made from polycarbonates. Now I don't know from what it is made, but this computer or this mobile is made up of semiconductor which are conducting polymers, made using conducting polymers and non-conducting polymers also. So you are all electronic gadgets are requiring polymer. Your shirts, pen drive, car, painting. In the car, you have tires, paint. Your interior is made from plastics. Your many components like from chips and everything is made from polymer. Then you have compact this. Nowadays, it is outdated, but still it is there. Atom oil. If you remember, 30 years before, we, we used to have the bullet or rajdut, which were very heavy. Nowadays, because of entry of plastic, that these atom oils weight has reduced their efficiency as far as petrol is concerned, has increased tremendously. Your sports shoes, then furnitures, even in the biomedical field, you have a lot of polymers applications. So that's why this is the age of polymer. Why these polymers are used in diverse field? We are calling that polymers are having problem to the environment. They are not biodegradable. They, be, they may be as such thousands of years in this atmosphere. They are leaching some toxic chemical. We are calling, but despite that, we don't have another option. We have to use a polymer. And that is because of this some features. You can find many of these polymers are lighter than water. Water. And even if they are not lighter than water, they are heavier than water, but their density is lower than the density of metal and we are using to replace them metals. Imagine you have 10 gram per cc density metal and you are replacing it by 1 gram per cc so your weight will reduce by 90% or 900 times you are reducing the weight of the material. You can find flights, your aircraft components, maximums are made from polymer because of their weight. They are free from corrosion. You can find one bolt I have shown here. I identified this bolt specially for, to show this application. 
the bolt which is covered the part of bolt which is covered with paint that is not rusted whereas threads which were not covered they have they got corroded this material have electrical insulation properties and therefore they are used in many electrical uh, components to host various uh, parts like your diode your ics and slots even some of them are conducting so they are used to make this electronic components also they have low thermal conductivity and wide range of colors is possible that's why we can use this so wonderful color articles we can make from the polymer which is not possible with metal even we can make part art articles from metal but we have to give them color and this color is not so lucrative as this color which we have inherently added in the polymer composition they have very good surface finish you can find these bottles they are so smooth low cost because light low cost processing charge is also low as they are processed at low temperature than metals metals require 1000 degree centigrade which require lot of energy lot of electricity to melt them and reprocess whereas your maximum polymers are melted less than 200 degree centigrade recycle at low cost because of this easy processing machinery is so simple resistance to biological attack so they are not biodegradable so you take it in positive way they have resistance to biological attacks and very easy processing so these are the few things by which we are utilizing polymers and we cannot substitute at least in next 50 years polymers by some other conventional or non conventional material we don't have option for it now i am coming to you what is the role of chemistry in preparation of or applications of polymer you may be asking the question or it might be in your mind that sir okay polymers are very much important in the life but what i can contribute or how can i contribute if you look at here scope of polymer preparation and application you can find here first i have written preparation so being a chemist or being a chemistry student you have to synthesize new polymer or a existing polymer and material balance is very important how you are taking the stoichiometry i will request a uh, chemistry student even though it is i am talking in relevance with polymer it is very important how you are balancing your material we are learning of you have learned it in the 11th standard and same thing you have to read and balance your material when you are having any reaction maybe during your research may maybe your master degree project phd or after that wherever you go you are doing some research r and d or some production you must have knowledge of material balance if you have material balance knowledge you can prepare the polymer properly you can prepare any chemical with minimum wastage and maximum output and so the cost of product can be as minimum as possible there are some reaction engineering part which is taken care by engineering people there are some uh, b tech or b in polymer chemistry student or b chemical engineering students they are looking for so they are looking for industry design reactor design and equipment design or equipment required allied equipment required for this reactor like your wall pipelines flow then their um, uh, pumps so like this materials they are designing or they are uh, advising therefore engineering is also required so one is a chemistry part which is very important for preparing new polymer and material balance and third second part is your engineering part. once polymer is prepared we have to process it into the final article so even though you prepare the polymer they are in the granule form so this granule form has to convert into this bottle with the proper color and that is can be that can be done on the processing so uh, designing of your article product design die design and machine design these are the parts you can have it in the cpet on some other organizations where they are teaching this die design courses are there so they are teaching this part then you can contribute in compounding 
compound in this one part, when you have this polypropylene, this is a colorless polymer actually. But this is incorporated with some uh, material which is colored and having some properties like this is added with some additives. One additive, one of the additives is light resistance or UV resistant additives is added. Similarly, each polymer is having its own characteristic and you require a different compounding for that polymer. So that knowledge, if you have, you have opportunity there. Then exploration of new techniques, new application in polymer processing. So you require various types of expertise when you go for polymer preparation and application, like you require chemist. Let it be organic, inorganic, physical, analytical, or polymer, industrial, or pesticide chemist. So you require a chemist. You require chemical engineering, mechanical engineering for the machine-related part, IT, computer, instrumentation, electrical, ENTC, and civil engineering. We are not focusing on the others, but we are focusing on the chemistry part. So you, uh, as I mentioned, your preparation of polymer is very important. I always talk in uh, my any any speech or talk that it is a buyer's economy. It's not seller's economy. Seller's economy, the days has gone. Before 1993, there was a seller's economy. When this economy was protected by Indian laws, but in 1993, or that time, Prime Minister P.V. Narasimha Rao, and that time, Finance Minister, Later, he became a, a prime minister, Manmohan Singh, accepted the uh, globalization and the globalization turned into the different things. And one of the things is before globalization acceptance, industry was dumping the material on buyers. They were saying that this is the material with me. If you want to buy, this is the only option. And you are having only limited option. But nowadays, after acceptance of globalization, many foreign companies came foreign technologies came to India, India and we got a lot many options. I will talk about the one soap. When we were having the cloth soap, it was a, a bar we were getting and it was a chance that bar can be a yellow color or it can be a fine one. Otherwise, most of the time it, it can be a black color and that shopkeeper will say, Asa zalai ghai, ghai na but nowadays, Forget about the color, you have all properties, consistency because of the globalization. So when you are going to buy some soap, you are saying, sir, I want this, this soap with this, this property, 250 gram, 200 gram, small. So you have from size, shape, color, quality, quantity options. And this is not exception for polymer. So not preparing polymer is important. Preparing polymer with appropriate properties is important. So I have given some example. Which mangoes you like? If I ask you a question, obvious question is left-hand side mangoes you like because they all are of the same size. These are haphazard size. They, some of them are very small. Some of them are very big. So similar in the polymer also, even though you prepared the polymer, what is the molecular weight of polymer? Average molecular because all are not same. Even in the average molecular weight, are they close to each other or there is vast difference? One is of 100 molecular weight and one is of 1 crore molecule. So this is also import, important. So there are a number of factors in preparation of polymer that is chemical composition, whether it is a single poly monomer, polyethylene, polystyrene, polypropylene, or it is a copolymer, it's two different or three different monomers you are combining in different proportion and preparing. So this is also important. Molecular weight is important. You have PVC. There are two molecular grades I have quoted here. One is 57,000 and another that is 67,000. So 57,000 is for your small objects which are prepared by injection molding. And 67 is for long objects which are prepared on extrusion molding, so five base materials. So this is also important, which grade material you have, accordingly which processing technique you need. And techniques of polymerization means these are physical aspects, bulk solution, suspension, emulsion, and interfacial polymerization. These are 
five different techniques of polymerization. They are taking care of whether there is a homogeneous polymerization or whether it is heterogeneous polymerization, which ingredients you have, what is the sequence of addition, whether you want to add solvent first, then monomer, let it dissolve and then initiate a, so this sequence, temperature, physical aspect, they are taking care of. So all these are important. And for this, you require a chemistry background, you require chemistry knowledge. So if you have chemistry knowledge and if you learn some polymer, you will be familiar with these techniques. You will be familiar with molecular weight. You will be familiar with how to prepare that particular molecular weight polymer. So your stoichiometry of material balance is also one of the important aspect in this preparation of polymer. In the compounding part, now I'm coming to the processing part. Before processing, I'm talking about the compounding. So these are colored uh, polymer granules are shown as a master batch. And this down is your actual polymer granules. So if it is a polypropylene and if you want to make suppose polyethylene and you want to make this uh, jars from this polyethylene, and we, you know that these are of different color, maybe used for different applications. So accordingly, you your additives level need to be different or stabilizer level need to be different. So you can choose one of them and you can add. So and that knowledge may not be to all industrialists, may not be to all operators. And therefore, chemists can prepare this and can say, oh, for 25 kg of polypropylene, you take this one kg and add, just add and you will get the can which is used for I purpose, which is used for X purpose, Y purpose, like that you can say. So this compounding is also important and this compounding industries are there. So they are offering jobs, they are offering employment to students. Then we have processing part. This processing part is taking heating to soften or melt your plastic. And once it is softened or melted, it can be easy for processing. It can be easy to send it into the dye. So next part is shaping and forming. Um, under this constraint of some kind, it can be uh, molded, it can be shaped, it can be formed, and then you can pull down this. So this is actually processing process. You have to heat it, melt it, insert into the dye. That liquid will get the shape of the dye and pull down. So it will get the solid uh, part of this. So in this way, Yes. In this way, uh, sorry, in this way, you can have processing of polymers. There are various ways of processing extrusion, injection, blow molding, calendaring, coating, compression, powder coating. These are various ways of processing of the polymer. Injection and extrusion are the most utilized processing techniques. Nearby to you, Chandwar, there are also few industries. I have seen when I was passing through your Chandwar. Uh, college even or the Chandwad uh, city. I have seen some processing industries nearby to that. So in the extrusion, you have one pipe, one barrel is inside, uh, that is called as barrel, and inside there is one screw. This will continuously rotate, and material will be taken from this hopper, and with the help of this thing, this will be forwarded, and this barrel is heated using the heater, so that gets melted, and whatever master batch you have added there, that will mix properly, homogeneously. And at the end, it will come through the dye. So whatever the shape of the dye accordingly, you will have the production of the material. You can find actual plant here. This is the actual plant. plant. Hopper is there. This is a, a barrel uh, or you can say extruder. And there is one motor which is rotating continuously that screw inside this. So here is one dye. From that dye, it is mostly for pipe kind of articles. So from that dye, that uh, extruded or molten polymer is coming in the form of pipe and that will be sent for here for the cool down in the water. And you will have pipe. You can find here this pipe we are getting here. So these are various applications of extruder, PVC pipes or your potable water pipes can also be made using this. Then profiles, your electrical tubes with, in which we are putting tubes, electrical pipes. So these all are made from extrusion techniques. This is one example where blown film extrusion, there are again 
some sub parts of this extrusion technique this is a blown film extruder this is a hopper this is motor and from here your more polymer will come inside this barrel and from the die instead of coming as a pipe it will come as a bubble here and because through the mandrel there is an insertion of air and this air will make this small pipe into the big bubble and this bubble will be further folded folded and wind up here and this will be utilized this technique is utilized to make your carry bag you can find carry bags or your uh, carry bag type applications you can make films packaging films and other you can make from this so this is how a blow molding is there there then sheet film extrusion so you have extrusion same but die is different and you are rotating it like this instead of pulling in the pipe like what we pulled in the pipe and you can have this extrusion uh, films so this can be used for partition of your office or can be used to replace your traditional furniture material then comes about the injection molding it also have the same structure barrel screw but the difference is this screw will have the motion backward and forward when it goes backward so under rotation condition molten polymer it will send in the next part or forward part and when it comes forward it will eject this material into the die and the die shape will come here you require low molecular weight polymer in the extrusion you require high molecular weight polymer that's why i said there are two grades of polyvinyl chloride 57 and 67 so when you have 57 you can go for injection molding when you have 67, you can make pipe from the extrusion system. So this is actual machine. Uh, downward is actual machine used for injection molding. And this is the drawing of injection molding. We are not going much more detail as time is not permitting us. But this kind of small articles you can make. Even these cans can be made using injection molding. That is called as injection blow molding. Or these dashboards and these components or your elbows of pipe or uh, couplings, this can be made by injection molding process. And this is a blow molding process in which we are injecting the material into the die, where in the die under the wetted condition, or you can say molten condition, there will be blowing of air. So you can find this, this injected material is coming inside. It is cut and then here air will be blown. So when air is blown, that material will stick up to the layer, outer layer of the dye, and it will take shape of the bottle you can find here. So slowly, slowly, the air will be blown up and you will get the shape of the bottle. So cans or your water bottles can be made using this injection blow molding. Then compression molding is another technique. We have some of these techniques in our laboratory. It will be compressed under heating condition and it will be molten and it will get the shape of compression molding. So this is for big articles like your tires, O-rings or thermoset materials are processed in the compression molding. So your all tires are made using compression molding. This is one rotation molding. This, this is the hot chamber in which this is the die in which we are adding the polymer. And this is rotated in this direction as well as opposite direction. So the polymer kept inside get mold, melted and that gets shape of this die from inside. And you can have a big article. Normally, this is used to prepare water tanks with from 50, 100, 500, 500 or 1000 liters. of. So these are the various processing technique I wanted to uh, show you and these are the opportunities in new gadget you can find semiconductors or electronic parts or drones or your digital watches so you are you can make using injection molding extrusion molding or different polymers so we have good opportunities here since there is decline in the china's economy we have that opportunity and uh, many Foreign companies are entering in India because they want option than China. They want China plus one. So they have policy. If one factory is in China, they want at least one factory outside the India, outside the China. And they, they are giving some of them are giving chance to India. So we have chance in this uh, manufacturing right from your plastic 
bags, plastic uh, packaging material, your tubes. Um, we are having test tube, uh, uh, a toothpaste, so that toothpaste is packed in one tube, just so that tube is also made from polymer. Now I am coming to researcher jobs. You have two options here. If you want to continue, one is doctoral research and postdoctoral research. It is related with polymer as well as some other chemistry also. You don't need to worry about that. This, these are only in the this one. And as I mentioned you, there are some higher education in which you can earn the money. So these are two higher education. One is doctoral research and postdoctoral research where you can earn the money. You may be thinking, sir, there are a lot many people giving paid examination, lot many people want a PhD degree, and that is difficult. Yes, in India it is difficult, but in foreign, they are not having much more students for PhD, and therefore, there may be one student and two university. So that picture is just a symbolic picture here. So you have a lot of opportunities in the foreign universities. They pay a lot of money for you doing the PhD. Uh, in fact, in India also, in many cases, we get uh, fellowships, but not in all cases. And the reason is we have a lot many students available who want to do PhD. So when you go for di uh, doctoral research, I, it is the highest degree one can achieve. There is DSC and DELETE, but these are not the degrees which can be achieved by us. These are the honorary degrees. So therefore, PAD is the highest degree and benefits of this PAD are these are improving job prospectus in industry, research institute, business, academics, postdoctoral work. This, this will give you a high salary package, status in society and will have the promotion uh, in the academic as well as in the industry. There are few students who approached to me last year and they said, sir, we got, uh, we lose the chance. We should have done PAD. Because after 15 years or 20 years of job, we got that that we have to, we should have done PAD. Because 10 to 15 years they completed based on master degree. They got a promotion. But now they have stuck up somewhere because they don't have PhD degree. So this is the importance of PhD degree. I can tell you one of my students is from the industry. And I said, sir, he's senior than me. His age is at least five, six years uh, more than me. So I asked him, sir, why don't you want to do, uh, why you want to do PhD? So his reason was, sir, I'm working in industry. I have my own industry, but whenever I'm going in the public and if I am speaking in front of public, I want some status. I am a PhD person because when I, I'm going to, especially Europe, those who are talking in conferences on program, all are doctors. And I am the only mister. So somewhere I feel that to improve my status, I want PAD and therefore he joined for PAD. So that is also benefit of PAD. Approach for PAD. All universities are conducting PhD entrance tests. It is mandatory to them. And nowadays UGC has cleared that they, are, they were conducting CSIR NET and your UGC NET. So there were two categories earlier. One is JRF, another was uh, lecturership. And very few were qualifying this. Now they thought instead of having paid for each student in the different universities, shall we give some eligibility to all universities? Those who have not qualified, at least LS. And they started the third category, which will give you exemption from pet of that particular university. So if you qualify uh, net examination in pet category, you don't need to give pet of each university. You don't need to fill up the form of different university. You don't need to pay much more money for filing the form. Or you, you have to watch, or a university ka gaya, iska kab aega, uska kab aega. So you, we are uh, giving a lot of efforts for that, that we can save here. Then we have project assistant position. Here are some projects where we, do, we don't employ or we don't require NET uh, mm -hmm. or SET candidate. So you can initially join as a project assistant and then you can go for PAD also. After two years, 
international universities are also having opportunities for phd but uh, i will recommend you uh, try to get at least two years experience in india and then go for phd in international universities we have a lot of fellowships for that csi jrf you know qualification and age i am not going to talk in detail csi or srf if you don't get jrf you can directly jump for srf you have two years experience through project assistant or from industry or somewhere or after completion of jrf is three years you can jump to srf sarthi bharti these are two fellowships given by state university then some teaching assistants are given by some university they want to support their student but they want something from the student so they will ask student to teach some or to conduct some practicals of master or bachelor student and they will pay against that as an fellowship institutional fellowships are also there some sponsorships are there or in service also you can do if you are in serving somewhere and if your organization is ready to support you you can do phd so this is how you can approach or you can do phd these are some notable institutes or universities where you can approach for chemistry polymer some uh, organic chemistry so kbc nmu kavitri bainabai choudhary north maharashtra university campus and colleges are offering csir laboratories there are around 40 laboratories established in 1951 by that time prime minister so these are ncl npl iict where you can approach icer indian institute of science and uh, your research they are they are at pune bhopal mohali you can approach to them also government organization like your drdo agarkar institute or some baba atomic research centers so there are lot many uh, research centers where you can apply for or government and private universities and international university you can apply for phd degree now after completing phd you can do your post doc and this in india also there are lot many post doctoral fellowships are available but if you go abroad you can earn lot of money in india it is around 50 to 70000 rupees so if you be uh, approach to humble fellowship stipend is starting from 2670 euro you can calculate in terms of indian rupee so it's a huge stipend you are getting for post doctoral fellowship in jsps it is a japanese fellowship these are very prestigious fellowship that's why i have put them india and abroad fellowships are also there our government of india is also giving fellowships to uh, the indian student to do their post doc in uh, abroad or opposite is also case so this is offered either through ugc dst you have to approach to J dst and ugc uh, website and there you can see that indo american indo uh, uk like this programs are there some other universities types of post doctoral research your industry projects or government projects you may be thinking sir i i want to do phd uh, i have completed phd and i want to do academic research no it depends in that case many times if the project is from or offer is from the professor and if the project is of industry then you have to work on the industry project or if it is a government project you have to work on the government project and in some cases professors are asking to you that you propose some project they will support that project if it is in relation with their core area so this is how we have to tackle that then expectation from candidate and how to apply these are two questions so expectation from candidate is here that candidate has to complete that project properly that person has to guide master bachelor students even for phd students also they need to help in characterization analysis or designing some part or helping in writing also that candidate has to be with the skill otherwise how he or she can guide to students so in the phd you are getting maximum skills and therefore it is expected that when you go to abroad for post doctoral uh, work you can guide to student and how to apply so for this you have to search many websites many uh, universities professors and you have to write them personally when you are writing 100 or 200 applications or giving email to them some of them will reply and probability you may probably you may get in the first instance or you may get post doctoral opportunity maybe 300 400 applications so don't disappoint if you don't get uh, opportunity 
So this is how process of postdoctoral research. Uh, after completing PhD or your master degree, you can join as a scientist to government institutes like BARC, Baba Atomic Research Center. They have their examination. Defense Research Development Organization, that is very big organization. They have appointed more than 5,000 scientists. Indian Space Research Organization is very uh, big organization and nowadays it is in limelight. Then government research laboratories are there, NCL, NPL, IICT or NMRL, like these laboratories are there where they, they are recruiting scientists. State and central laboratories also are there where you can be appointed as a scientist. As a job, you can approach after PhD or postdoctoral research. Uh, industrial research for chemistry, I will come to the next slide. Chemistry have very, means it was the largest job creating industrial sector before few years before entry of your <clears throat> uh, IT sector. And it is going with 15 to 20 percent in India. Polymer is also going with 15 to 20 percent. And therefore, a lot many people are employed in industry. So you have to think about industrial jobs also. So here you have R&D research and development, new development, product development, quality control, whatever raw material is coming or in house quality control is there. So the quality control requires some specific standards. So these standards, they are testing for their production. Quality assurance, they are assuring that this is the quality of our work. Normally, this is the quality control when your product is going outside. Production, in the production also, they require chemist. There are some technical services. If you want to sell your product, you're going to somewhere. So you require chemistry knowledge and therefore these technical services are requiring chemistry, marketing and management. So these are various industry jobs for polymer and general chemistry students also. But there is one challenge, friends. Don't take it easy. It's not that much easy that I have put very wonderful picture and you will get the job. See, 56% of us are unable to find the right candidate. I mean industry. And everybody wants salary, but people don't want to work properly. They don't want to take uh, that much work which industry is giving. So you have to match with this. I work as a central training placement office uh, coordinator of our department for many years. So I have talked with many of industry person and they are coming to university and they are saying, sir, I'm sorry, but your students are not able to give answers. They don't know basics. It's many times I have heard. And this is common for any, any master's student in chemistry or bachelor's student in chemistry, physics, or whatever it is. It is not only case with engineering students. They have confidence. And you have the knowledge, but you have lack of confidence. So I will say you, be prepared for properly for these jobs and tackling these challenges. This is a freelancing job where you are not bound in office time, you are doing job as per your requirement. It is normally the job after having some experience, so you become a consultant. So you are helping to start the plant. You have got the information about the plants, how the plants are working, what should be the designing, what should be the product, how it should be formulated. And you know about new product development, market development. So you know the connects in the market, you know the new products in the market and then only you can be consultant but there are some jobs which can be uh, before that that is freelancing jobs and these are suppose you know came or you know some softwares and you can predict the products you can eliminate 100 reactions suppose people were doing 100 reaction earlier now they don't want 100 they want 10 reactions only so you have to eliminate 90. So these are not possible or this will require this chemical, which is toxic or it is requiring expensive chemical. Like this, you can uh, do some research work for uh, online or theoretical research also. That is also possible for industries. So these are various freelancing jobs you can have. And of course, there are situations that availability of new polymer structures are there. 
earlier only physical chemists were involved nowadays organic chemists are also involved there is abrupt change in electronic industry you can find this computer having around 8 gb of ram you may say sir what is new in that 8 gb is very common in fact there are 16 or more gb rams are available in the market friends so i am talking when i was doing phd my computer my my means institutes fastest computer was with the 1 gb ram now it is 16 gb in your mobile so electronic has changed because of conducting polymers people have synthesized newer and newer conducting polymers and there are applications of polymer in biomedical and some other application i will talk about them very uh, fastly and i will end up my presentation so you have a lot of opportunity in the agriculture sector world's population has crossed 7 billion 700 crore and you require to feed them food which is not possible with new technology so you have to make lot many pesticides with the safer uh, side so you have to provide conditioner then you have to provide fertilizers and you have to provide lot many material which are polymeric in nature so you have a use use opportunities in agriculture sector then in pharmaceutical you have drug delivery body implants biosensor wound tracing medical devices packaging of medicine dental materials so these materials these dental materials are polymeric and cap can be a metallic one even this you can find here the tablets are packed in plastic material syringes packed in polymer material wound tracings are also made from polymer and people want to replace that environmental issue or they want to uh, reduce that environmental issue by having sustainable polymer materials so nowadays we are having fossil based material this fossil based material can be can go to the landfill can go to incineration or ocean so it's a big problem especially microplastic is big problem so people want to make polymers from renewable sources one of the example is polylactic acid which is made from uh, maize and that maize is converted into polylactic acid lactic acid to lactide lactide to polylactic acid and this polylactic acid can be used to make one time plastic as a biodegradable replacement for your conventional polyethylene polypropylene based plastic another area is hydrogel materials so this is helping to your wound tracing contact lenses drug delivery disposable diapers tissue engineering and agriculture part we are working on hydrogel we are working on sustainable polymer and smart materials also smart polymers mean smart materials or smart polymers they don't require human intervention they are detecting the threats and they are giving solution themselves like a human being human being is smart if some obstacle is coming we we know that something is coming so we can divert or we can stop that part easily this is the smartness with the animal but this is not with the material it is with the material if you have some incorporation so up to some degree you can make your material smart and this smart or intelligent material can be stimuli responsive so when you change the ph they will change and this ph change materials can have application in drug delivery can have application in delivery of some material so this way you can use smart material so this smart polymeric material is increasing with very fast speed so you have polymers application in agriculture sector you require decrease in weight and size of electronic gadgets renewable energy and energy storage with the help of polymer speed of electronic data transfer and storage as much as possible high enormous application in biomedical field with polymer and removal of micro and nano size plastic waste material from your polymer mat so with this i conclude that there is enormous scope in polymer preparation preparation of new formulation processing techniques and new product developments where which you can grab with this i will stop here i will thank to dr sanjeeti sir and his team as well as organizers and directors of the institute for giving me chance to deliver my lectures and interact with you people thank you thank you sir
थैंक यू सर गीते सर फॉर योर डिलीवरी ऑन दिस इंडस्ट्रियल एप्लीकेशंस ऑफ पॉलीमर केमिस्ट्री एंड आल्सो अपॉर्चुनिटीज फॉर स्टूडेंट्स इन दियर फ्यूचर डेवलपमेंट सो आई रिक्वेस्ट आवर कलीग डॉक्टर वाल्मीक आवारे सर टू गिव वोट ऑफ थैंक्स Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I said, Dr. Varun Kavare here for the vote of thanks. Uh, initially, I would like to thank you uh, to our honorable management, uh, Dr. and uh, Dr. T. N. Shimpi sir, who is the principal of our college, who has given they have given permissions to deliver uh, arrange this webinar, one day webinar. First of all. I am very thankful to uh, Dr. Vikas Gede for delivering this his lecture on industrial applications of polymer chemistry. He nicely elaborated the topic of the polymers, how important is the polymer in our life. He also explained the types of polymers, how polymers uh, are useful in various uh, sectors like agriculture, pharmaceuticals, and many other sectors. He uh, very nicely explained how polymer particles can be converted into the another articles which we can use in our daily life finally he also elaborated the topics for the students especially for the students that what are the opportunities are available in the market uh, either in terms of doctoral study post doctoral study or industrial applications so finally i would like to thank you to all my colleagues teaching and non teaching staff for arranging and uh, assisting uh, this webinar Uh, so with the prior permission of doctor uh, our organizer i would i would like to say that this uh, seminar is webinar is over thank you thank you sir uh, for participants uh, let me uh, give that uh, information about uh, feedback link which is posted on this uh, chat box you may please give your feedback and uh, when you are giving feedback then and then only you will get the certificate that uh, arrangement is done like that only so please go for feedback give your feedback and get your certificate and you have to wait for 2 3 days to get that certificate please uh, we welcome your patience for that particular thing and uh, i also once again thank to one and all and uh, thank you for listening carefully and with your patience thank you one and all